of the many horrors endured by Palestinians and Israelis since the Hamas attacks of October 7th, perhaps none is more acute than those of expectant mothers. For the last several months, special correspondent Leila Molana Allen has been charting the progress of their pain, their pregnancies, their sorrows and their joys. She brings us their stories now. Each day in Gaza, mothers search desperately for food for their children. By night, as Israeli airstrikes pound the strip, they pray those children will live to see morning. <laughs> Expectant mothers live in fear their babies will never be born at all. An estimated 50,000 women in Gaza are currently pregnant, with about 180 babies being born each day. Medical staff report newborns being birthed on blood-soaked floors and in dirty bathrooms of overwhelmed hospitals and caesarean sections carried out without anaesthetic. Three months ago, Emanuel Bashliki had an emergency C-section after she went into labor while fleeing heavy bombing in North Gaza. They bombed all the hospitals in the north in the Jabalia camp and the bombing was happening over our heads. Her displaced family is now living in filthy conditions, so the wounds from her cesarean surgery have become badly infected. With medical stocks almost wiped out, she's hoping the doctors will still have enough antibiotics left to help her. I'm so exhausted. I can't even get up to play a mother's role in my baby's life. I can't walk or get up to feed him or hold him. Trapped by bombing for weeks, three months pregnant Iman Mashayer finally made it here for a checkup. The doctors had devastating news. There was no heartbeat. Worse still, they haven't been able to operate to remove the fetus because there are just too many critically injured patients they have to treat first. If a man has to wait much longer, sepsis could kill her. I've known for a month now that my baby is dead and they still haven't removed it because of the huge numbers of people here. I'm scared because I have to have an operation without any anesthesia. The doctor says I might become poisoned by the failed pregnancy. Severe malnutrition, scarce clean water and dire living conditions are leading to a massive rise in premature and underweight births, miscarriages and death of mothers and newborns. Most of Gaza's hospitals have collapsed thanks to Israel's aerial bombardment and the siege, cutting off medical supplies and electricity. Rafa's Emirati hospital is still hanging on. Doctors and midwives here do what they can to cope. Dr. Sana El Jazar is a resident pediatrician. There is a high percentage of critical cases coming in and a high percentage of death. A lot of women are giving birth prematurely as a result of fear and the war and the chaotic living circumstances. After the women go home with their babies, they come back a few days later because their babies have dehydration or they have diarrhea or they're vomiting. UNICEF's Tess Ingram was horrified by the condition she found mothers and babies enduring on a recent visit. It is unbelievable what is happening here at the Emirati Hospital. The situation is very desperate. Some of the mothers uh, haven't made it through giving birth. We're calling for an immediate ceasefire so that the fighting can stop and so that UNICEF and other aid agencies can bring them the help that they need. As Hamas rockets continue to fall across the border in Israel, expectant mothers live in the shadow of this war. Ilana Polat is a midwife at Sterot Hospital, one of the largest in southern Israel. The maternity clinic here has been moved into a reinforced concrete shelter after multiple rockets hit the hospital. Very scary for women, very scary for the families and for the babies, because, you know, any time we can hear a siren and we are not in the protected area and we need to run and women after birth with epidural cannot run. So it's feeling... <laughs> Seva yes, it's here. We can now. We maybe we will hear the siren here. So it's it's very emotional time and, and very stressful time. Noah Sarfati thought she wouldn't survive to see her second child born, or be able to save her first. On October seventh, she, her husband, and their toddler Michael hid for a full day and night as Hamas terrorists rampaged through their hometown of Kibbutz Kfar Azar on the Gaza border, killing everyone they could find. 
זה קשה לי נורא לדבר על השעות האלה, אבל אתה פשוט יושב ומחכה ש... שיהרגו אותו. I find it extremely hard to talk about those hours. I sat there waiting for them to kill him. I could barely look at my son because I understood in my head that his life was about to end. And imagine thinking that for 25 hours. In her second trimester, as the hours ticked by and she grew weaker, Noah felt sure she would lose the baby. Finally, they were rescued by IDF soldiers the next morning. High school teacher Noah used to be liberal to her core. She taught her students to value all life on both sides of the border. Now she doesn't know if she'll ever feel safe again. Everything has changed. I don't care about anyone in Gaza anymore. I won't forgive them. When something like that happens, something very, very deep breaks inside you. Noah says she'll never go back to Kfar Aza. She's now had a baby boy, Yair, and hopes they'll find a new home with what's left of their community. Back in Gaza, displaced multiple times and under daily bombardment, new mothers have nowhere safe to go. But barely functioning hospitals have no space to keep them. If they're lucky enough to survive a safe birth in these conditions, they go home to filthy, freezing cold shelters, living on a single meal a day. Baby formula has run out. To breastfeed, mothers need to drink 16 cups of water a day. Gazans are currently lucky to find two cups. If people don't have sympathy for newborn babies, for the elderly, for children living on the streets, then I don't know what to say after everything they've seen. Jawahar Assad gave birth an hour ago, but she hasn't been able to hold her baby Yaman yet. He's in intensive care. They're both facing life-threatening breathing issues because of the toxic smoke Jawahar has been breathing in from the improvised stove they use to keep warm. This pregnancy was really hard on me. There is no food. I haven't eaten in a week. Jawahar doesn't know how she'll feed baby Yaman or the 12 other bereaved kids from her extended family waiting back in their tent. Our kids don't deserve to live any of this to be thrown into the streets without food, without shelter, even without clothes. The rain and cold pour down on us and we don't have anywhere to take shelter. And now I've given birth. God save us from what we're living. The UN has called Gaza a graveyard for children. Nearly 12 and a half thousand Gazan children have been killed since Israel's attack began. That's more than the total number of children killed in all other global conflicts in the previous four years combined. Mothers, desperate to keep their children safe, can do little but pray for an end to their nightmare. As this brutal war lurches on, hopes of a peaceful future for Palestinian and Israeli children look starker than ever. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Leila Malana Allen on the Israel-Gaza border.